Hello everyone. Now I have a 400 watt, 800 watt peak inverter attached to the ultra capacitor power pack with no load other than simply the fan. We're at 13.75 volts down from 14.25 seems to be holding there well, now down to 13.74 going to try plugging in a couple of items uh, we'll start with a, a simple lamp that draws about 20 watts resistance loads are a whole lot better for uh, that looks good there resistance loads on a um, it's not a pure sine wave inverter my understanding is the resistance loads are a lot easier for it to take. So there's a simple halogen 20 watt. The brown stuff on the side there is dead burnt moths. But the uh, resistance load is easiest for the uh, inverters to take. When you start getting into higher quality motors, the quality of the power coming out of the inverter is really important. So folks that are running expensive tools down from 13.75 and that light is still on and people start running more expensive tools for an extended period of time um, then a full sine wave inverter will be important but for the kind of stuff that we're going to test out uh, it's not as important. So another resistive load. I'm going to plug in my 15 watt soldering iron. So again, real low draw resistive loads. And uh, the higher the quality of the inverter, I'm going to set that there for now. And we're down to 12.9 volts DC and dropping with um, the 20 watt light and the 15 watt soldering iron. So that puts us at about 35 watts loaded. 12.7. This inverter should squeal at me at about 10. So one amp glue gun here and one amp at 110 volts AC is about 110 watts. So we'll go ahead and plug that guy in as well. I'm going to unplug this soldering iron because we're going to do kind of a peak load test here. Set that down on the floor. And then I'm going to go ahead and plug in the glue gun. So we've got glue gun. And you can see the light on the handle there and you can see where perhaps you can see where it says one amp and one amp at 110 volts is about 110 watts plus the light that we've got on there still 
with its yogurt container glare shield and we're now at just under 12 volts so this seems to me to represent a good test of the ultra capacitor bank's ability to hold a charge to run a simple inverter to run a couple of devices on it um, up to what are we 130 watts I don't have much else here to put a bigger load on it but the next test I just uh, measured the bank that's in the truck right now our big Dodge and the next test to do there will be wired in parallel with the existing one of the existing batteries we have two batteries in that big beast so we'll wire this system in parallel I'll need to get a couple of nice probably one or zero gauge wire and then may build a plastic or wood box with um, some inner tube car inner tube rubber lining it for vibration and maybe even a strap that'll mount it down the bottom of the box and some kind of handle to lift up and out yeah, we're approaching there it is 10.6 we'll just see where this thing goes until it shuts itself off but you can hear the inverters squeaking at me So we've charged it up with a solar panel and then we're able to use a wall charger and now we've started discharging it with an inverter and a couple of resistive loads. Again next I'll probably move to uh, installing it in the truck and I may even install it in the truck charged and try to start it without either of the batteries that are in there already. Still going down to 1.23. My light is now out and so is the handle. The power, green power light seems to be out. But the fan's still running. So I'm gonna keep it on with the fan. Doesn't seem to be, that's loading it a bit still. 10.22 from 10.23 so there's the preliminary test next one again probably wired into the truck charged on its own and see if it can start her up signing off